you, I have here a teeny, teeny, tiny watercolor kit. This is something I picked up from David Art Supply, and I even did an art challenge using this teeny tiny kit during the stream to celebrate 7-Inch Care's one-year launch anniversary. So what I am trying to do is I want to refit this tiny little watercolor kit, get rid of the watercolors in it, and replace them with the watercolors of my choice. And as you can see, that wasn't too hard. Uh, it's kind of like a little little candy in there, like a Smartie or something. And there's a little glue pat on the back. It's not even a hard glue pat. It's like a rubbery glue pat. So I am going to go ahead and pull out all of the little tiny paints since I've already messed with these and replace it with something better. So I've got all those little paint pucks out of my palette. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean this out. And I thought the cover was just super cute. This adorable little girl painting her puppo. So I've got my miniature palette all nice and cleaned out. I even removed the sticker from the back. It did leave a sticky, nasty residue. And I can't currently find my essential six sets. So let me zoom in, zoom out for you guys. I grabbed my mission tube set with the 24 colors. So I figure I can definitely get some nice colors for my little mini palette in here. So my goal is let me actually put it this way. A cool yellow a warm yellow, a cool red, a warm red. I don't know that there's a good cool blue in here, so I'm gonna grab peacock blue. No, I guess cobalt would be a good cool. I'm gonna stick with peacock anyway. Cerulean, okay, so we've got, we've got, let's see, we've got eight we can fill and we've got six already, so let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna start with lemon yellow, my cool yellow. Fill that little indent all the way up. Then I'm gonna do permanent yellow deep. This is definitely kind of a spoiled hobbyist sort of thing to do. Then permanent red, keeping cool red on. So my top are gonna be my cools, my bottom are gonna be my warms. Permanent rose underneath, that's my cool. Wait, I got that backwards. And I've goofed it already. What up, up, but up, bump, bump, because I confused myself. Awesome. So so fine. Um, actually, no, I think, whatever. It makes sense in my head. I am clearly not gonna be able to explain it correctly for you guys and I apologize for that. These two blues should be switched though. Then, hmm, I can put in a purple, but that's not gonna be, oh, I have so many wonderful colors. It makes it difficult to pick. I think I'm gonna grab burnt umber and then one more burnt umber. And then, do I have two Van Dyke browns in here? No. And my two watercolors fit just about perfectly in this teeny weeny teensy tiny palette. What I'm gonna do is let this dry out completely with the top open. That way the air can circulate and get in there. Now, unfortunately, if I don't like the color order, I'm kind of stuck with it because these are filled directly into the little wells, but there's not really a lot of paint there that could be used up kind of quickly. All right, guys, so my teeny tiny watercolor palette 
has been redone and filled with Magello paints. And these have had a chance to dry. I do have an unbox and swatch video of these, but in case you guys were curious, I can do a very, very cheap little swatch demonstration here on some completely not watercolor paper. So I'll use a little water brush, not actually that little, but you know. And you guys can see that the colors are really nice and brilliant. I probably should have organized them a little bit differently, but now that they're in, they're in. And this is so little I can, I mean, I've done a few travel watercolor sets on this channel. I've, so, you know, with any of those, with the one uh, made from like a little pill container. Oh, no, okay. That's not as warm as I would have liked, but it's all right. Um, even using like a little pill container, you can make a handy little pocket sized watercolor uh, sketch kit. So I think all that remains is to actually paint something with this, right? So to celebrate the one year posting anniversary of my comic, Seven Inch Kara, I did a stream. And during that stream, I did a tiny painting, a miniature painting. And I even used miniature paintbrush. I'm not gonna use the miniature paintbrush this time. And I'm trying to find the little painting I did and I can't, so that's fine. Whatever, we will progress, we'll move on. Do another drawing of Naomi. And these mini polar mechanical pencils by Basic, they're not bad. They were the only mini mechanical pencils or the best rated ones I found. Um, and they're, this is the smallest I've seen. I'm sure you can find something smaller in like Japan where they've kind of specialized in miniaturizing this. So I'll do Naomi again. It's a really dorky pose. And I am sketching on Strathmore's pre-cut Artist ATC watercolor paper. So it's really not as tiny as it could be. I know it's currently the thing to do like mini drawings that are the size of a penny. And I might, I might be into doing that. I might be interested in that. But for today, I'll just stick with this. This is a fine size. And since I've got so many lines down on the paper, I think I'm actually going to ink this. And no, I'm not going to ink it with something mini. And you guys see me rotate my mechanical pencil like that. It's so I can find a sharp point on the lead. Since this is kind of a softer lead. And we've got a really quick little sketch of Naomi. Now to find something that will be waterproof when dry. I've got here a full-size Sakura Pigma FB. And rather than give this my usual 24-hour dry time, I will probably just give this like 10 to 15 minutes. Ideally, if you've got the time, you want to let your inks dry overnight, especially if your paper has a coating on it. This doesn't seem to. I'll try to dig up that other portrait of Naomi so we can compare the difference between the paints. If there's even a visible difference. I'm sure there will be, but you know, hedging my bets there. During the stream, people seem pretty satisfied with how the original paints in the set handled. I was kind of surprised. They were fairly similar to Koi. In fact, the hardest thing about that little demonstration was using the tiny, tiny Dale or Rowney Aquafine watercolor brush, it was just really uncomfortable. And that's, I mean, it's small. It's a travel size brush for a travel kit, but it's not like, as it's not a miniature, miniature brush.
Oh, I'm so sorry. Seem to have ended up off screen. I am starting to make plans for the volume two Kickstarter since I am working on chapter eight. Is there anything you guys, my dear YouTube friends and art nerds, would like to see me do to help kind of celebrate and commemorate that. I had so much fun during the stream. I'll probably do another stream, but if there's something else you guys would like to see me do, let me know in the comments below. All right, so there is our inked mini. Here is our paint. I've got our teeny tiny watercolor pencils. So, trying to find somewhere to put everything. I will let this dry and I'll see you guys in about 10 minutes. All right, guys, I think that's had a chance to cure. When assembled all of my adorable tiny art supplies and got a tiny glass of water, those ridiculous uh, Dixie Cup shot glasses are just too perfect. The only thing that might be even better would be to use a medicine cup. But I am going to go ahead and erase this. We've got a, a number one cutie on our hands. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I'm also gonna use a water brush just because I think it'll make my life easier and I'm all about my life being easier. And in case you guys haven't watched the full field test for these Magello tube watercolors. I really, really like them. And I love how vibrant they are. Check out how beautiful that blue is. So I've cleaned most of the water brush out. I'm going to use the little bit of residual blue to kind of tone her eyes, add some shadow. And I think for the background, I'm just going to use some of the scarlet red. And with such a little bitty watercolor set, you're gonna burn through these colors pretty quickly, but. Honestly, that's not really an issue. I mean, you could fill this tiny set a bunch of times, even with the little seven milliliter uh, tubes. And if you decide there's a color you'd prefer to have, I was really tempted to do like all synthetic like Quinn colors. So like, well, not that Opera Rose is a Quinn, but you know, like Opera Rose and um, really intense Peacock Blue and Dioxine Violet, because I love those colors, but they're, I think I could learn to use them for urban sketching because if you mix as long as you have like complementary colors, you can kind of mix the midtones and the grays and the browns and the neutrals that you need. But I just didn't have the guts to do it. Maybe next time, maybe once I run through these. I mean, I've worked with the uh, the three cool, the three warm of the primaries before. In fact, I did that in the Daniel Smith Essential Six video, and that's what I'd wanted to fill this palette with initially but the Magellos are really nice too, so I don't regret that. Now I'm gonna do a little bit of underpainting with the cooler red. And I'm doing this because Naomi has dark skin, so I found that doing an underpainting kinda helps uh, things like blush and lips come together a little bit better so it doesn't look like just weird makeup applied at the end, even though it totally looks like weird makeup at this stage. but I'm gonna be applying a skin tone mix. So. And I honestly have no intention on using the water brush for the whole thing, but I'm gonna use it for as long as it works. So she looks a little bit silly right now. That's okay. We're gonna let her skin dry. And I'm going to clean up that little bit of stray. And 
I don't even really consider this to be super small. The art supplies being small makes it challenging, but I don't consider this to be super small. Since I do comics, I am often rendering things much smaller than this. Especially in like the thumbnails and rough stage. Nothing is bigger than this basically in the rough, I mean in the thumbnail stage. I'll do some on her shoulders as well. And I'll get back in there with that blue. Well, yeah, I think this is actually a cooler blue than I thought it would be. It's a really nice color. It's just not what I wanted. All right, now let this dry. Okay, so I've got some of the blue already on my table. I'm going to grab a little bit of the cool yellow. And do the first layer on her eyes. And then I'm going to, I think I did not grab the best brown first. That's okay. Oh, I didn't grab an actual black, so I'm going to have to mix one. That'll be fun. A little bit of color mixing, a little bit of teeny tiny watercolor painting. So I think this is just Van Dyke Brown that I am using for the base tone of her skin. Usually I do a custom mix. Let's see how just using kind of a straight pan color turns out. Don't really like doing straight pan watercolors for skin tones. Because I feel like it, it comes off as like really one dimensional. You don't really get a, what I would think of as like a true skin color. But after doing the whole line field test, I'm definitely open to experimenting a little bit more. I'm not going to be too precious about not getting skin tone in her hair since she has really dark hair. Okay, let's see how that, how that dries. All right, so that's not that bad. It is not quite, ah, well, it's just not that bad. All right, I'm going to switch over now to my Teensy Meensy brush. I'm going to grab a little bit more of that green with some blue in it. Add some shading to the tops of her eyes. Then I'm going to go ahead and honestly, this little brush is probably the hardest thing or one of the hardest things to use because it's a synthetic, so it wants to drip, 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 drop. It would be good for pulling like really tight details though. It's just not super good for covering large areas. However, using a water brush, it'll continually drip water into my solution. So, kind of pick your poison. I'm gonna clean that out, blend that a little bit. Of getting all the main shadow zones on the face. And I'm going to blend a little bit just so that we get some contrast in types of shadows. We get some, some direct hard line shadows and then some soft blended shadows. And let that dry. So while this dries, I am going to attempt to mix up at least the base for Naomi's hair. So I'm going to use the cooler of the two browns and I'm going to use some blue. All right. I think we're getting in the right direction there. And then I've got the water brush again. And I'm going to use this because it's quicker to do a fill. Oh, wow. Look at that. She's going to have mermaid hair, y'all. Because that is very green. OK, 
Okay, I look forward to seeing how that dries. We'll see. Okay, her hair is still wet, but it's dry. Wow, it's very still wet. <laughs> but it's drying, it's better. It's more the color I kind of wanted. So I'm not super concerned about that anymore. It's just going to be about getting it dark enough. I'm going to go ahead and do another layer. You guys can kind of see how that under layer went to influence um, like blush and her cheeks without, I, I mean her lips without it being like overbearing. That's why I do sort of an under layer with darker skin tones. I find it's a lot easier than trying to do very light glazes on top of it because often you'll disturb the pigments and you won't get as nice a result. And then, because why not, I'll do some wet into wet. See, it's wet enough that it's like actually damp to the touch, but I'm not getting a lot of wet into wet blending. What is up with you? Almost dipped this in water. I don't need to do that. Grab some more. I'm going to want to start leaving highlights in her hair too. That way it looks like she has curly hair and not just like a solid mass of cartoon hair. But that can be done not just on this layer, but in subsequent layers. Okay, yeah. All right, let's see if we can't get another layer on her skin. I'm grabbing some of the cooler brown to help with shading. And if that doesn't work, I'll put a little bit of blue in. But I think it'll work. I gotta be careful because it's starting to get a little soupy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply it and then blend it out a little bit. Now, nice thing about watercolors, well, nice thing, terrible thing, is that they tend to dry lighter than they go down. So while you're still kind of getting used to that, it can look, or even just getting used to a new brand, it can often look too dark and then end up being just right, or even too light. Let's see if I can't fix that a little bit over there. And the reflection is making it a little bit difficult. That's why you see me lift it up every now and then so I can get a better idea of what everything's starting to look like. So the only area that's really a problem is her neck. Blend that out a little bit. All right, that's not bad. Now I got to figure out how to do the darkest layer on her hair. Obviously, we're going to grab some brown. And some blue, maybe even some red. I meant to clean all those pans out after. just to clean the stray colors off. So what do you guys think? Does that seem like a nice upgrade for a cheap little watercolor palette? What colors would you put in your eight color travel palette? Would you focus more on doing portraits or like urban sketching or what? What would be the use? For your little travel palette or would it just be fun to have something pocket size for when inspiration strikes and do you have a favorite pocket size paper for this sort of thing do you use sketchbook paper and just only do a couple of washes do you use a mole skin do you use watercolor paper mixed media paper what do you guys like to do when I travel, I really like to use handbooks 
the linen bound handbooks. That's clean. Some of that blue off. Oh, it's purple now. I mean, of course. It can be a little hard to clean. These little cakes, because since they're filled from a tube, they get gummy really quick. I know repurposing an old Altoids tin is a very popular travel kit. I, I happen to prefer the pillbox since it already has um, segments that you can fill with whatever color you want to fill. All right, looking pretty good considering the materials. I still need to use those mini color pencils too. Another layer. And what is the craziest thing you've ever just had to stop and paint? You just couldn't resist the urge. I'm pretty boring. I don't think there's anything too crazy. I think my second Nokus Fest, though, I did some, uh, some watercolor sketching of the crowd from my table. That's probably the quote-unquote craziest thing I've ever had to stop and paint. But I have a trip to Japan coming up, so who knows? what I will decide to stop and paint. Okay, so I'm gonna let Naomi dry. So this is pretty much dry. Yep. So I'm gonna close my teeny tiny little set. We're gonna open the other teeny tiny little set of itty bitty little color pencils. I'm also gonna clean this mess up a little bit. All right, all clean. These things, if you don't have arthritis going into this, you're certainly going to end up with arthritis coming out. So I'm gonna use the white to add some highlights and it's so tiny. I can barely even hold it. Okay. And then I'm going to use a little bit of the purple. Well, it's so little, it's impossible <laughs> to use a lot of it. There's just not enough there to be more just to add a little bit of shading. And a little under her nose. Add some color to her cheeks. And then a little bit of this really nice blue. Okay, and then I don't like how dark that purple is. So I'm gonna go into, or rather how saturated that purple is. I'm gonna go back into my little mini watercolor set and just paint over it a little bit. Hopefully when it dries, it'll dry a little less purple. I feel almost like I need like jeweler's eyeglasses to be able to see what I'm doing here. Let that dry and see what we've got. So that actually looks pretty good. I'm disappointed that I'm having such a hard time using these teensy weensy things. I may have to do an illustration with just the mini water, I mean the mini color pencils on their own. I'm going to cheat a little bit and use just a little bit of lead proof white to do some accents but don't worry i will use the teeny tiny brush and the teeny tiny cup of water and that makes it all okay right all is forgiven as long as i'm using multiple teeny tiny things i 
teeny tiny brush. This sure does not pull good teeny tiny details. I think we are done. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me as we solve the mystery of this teeny tiny watercolor set. We turned it into a pocket set that is very usable. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit thumbs up. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions or if you want to see me demonstrate anything particular. If you'd like to see this set in action on the road, let me know. And check out some of my other great watercolor tutorials here on this channel and over at natosoup blogspot.com. If you like my art, don't forget to check out my free watercolor webcomic, of which this beautiful gal is a character, 7inch Kara, at 7inchkara.tumblr.com or 7inchkara.com. Hope you guys have a great day, and I hope to see you again really soon. Bye, guys. One more thing. I know most of you are left already. So I did actually find the piece I did the other night during the stream. So this was done with the original watercolors in the teeny tiny watercolor set. They handle a lot like Sakura Koi. This was done with the Magello watercolors that I put into that set after I pried those little cakes out. So I'll let you guys be the judge, which is your favorite. I think they both have their merits. This one actually feels more like a portrait and this feels more like just a sketch kind of thing, if that makes sense. So thank you guys again for watching and I'll see you again really soon. Bye.